Good morning, 8th grade. We are ready for Lesson 12, so please get your language arts books and turn to page 36. Welcome back to class. <coughs> Good to be with you. And I have something special to tell you. I just finished checking your quizzes a little bit ago, quiz ones. And you did great. You, most of you did really, really well. Much better than some of the last quizzes. And I know maybe in some ways it wasn't quite as hard. But I was super, super pleased that you did so well on the getting all those indefinite pronouns. So all that hard work and memorizing that paid off. And I, I think every one of you got everyone right. So great job. Um, and, you're, and you're really figuring out how to do those indefinite pronouns and then choosing the right verb. You know, it's not even really that hard. You know, you just know if it's a singular indefinite pronoun as a subject, then you've got to choose a singular verb. And, you know, if it's, if it's always plural, always choose a plural verb. And if it couldn't be either, other, either one, you go by the object of preposition. So it's pretty easy, isn't it, when you get it. So good job. We're switching gears here in Lesson 12. We're going to talk about writing interesting sentences. And this reminded me of one of my favorite authors, Mike Mason. And I'm not sure if I'm quoting him exactly, but this is really close. When someone asked him, how do you write books? He says, I simply, I write good sentences. And you just stack one sentence on another, and then you have a paragraph, and you put paragraphs together. And you have a chapter, you have a chapter, and you have a book. But what, what he's telling me is that he pays attention to every sentence and makes sure it's a good one. And you know what you end up with? Mike Mason's books are very interesting and easy to read. It isn't complicated. You don't have to try to grapple with what is this man saying? Where is he going? He is carefully thought out and in an interesting way writes good sentences. We can all say what we want to say in various ways, but if we always say it the same way, it ends up being not so interesting. The key in making sentences interesting is use variety. Use variety. So, one of the ways to use variety is change how you begin your sentences. And you have five sentence beginnings to write your own sentence. Now remember, don't try to do this assignment just as quickly as you can, because the goal here is to teach you to write interesting sentences. So put some effort into this. You only have five, so try to make them as interesting as you can. Interesting beginnings. The first one gives you compound adjectives to begin your sentence. That's an interesting way. You could uh, go from there and um, use it almost infinitely. Tall and stately, and then finish the sentence. But uh, the point is here, it's teaching you, you can begin sentences with compound adjectives and keep it interesting. Okay, number two, looking over her shoulder. If you are thinking carefully, you will note that that is a participle phrase. Looking would be used to describe the subject. Looking over her shoulder, Jenny, or you put the person's name in there, um, Rover, my dog, well, no, Rover wouldn't be a her, so that won't work. It is her shoulder. <laughs> so, uh, yes, you do it, but we, we have a participle phrase. That's a good, interesting way to begin a sentence. Number three, after the explosion. Wow, that has my attention. And by the way, that's a prepositional phrase. So it's an adverb prepositional phrase. After the explosion, and you can go on and tell what's going to happen. I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to hear what you, what you come up with. Number four, when I finish here, there we have a clause. That's a good way to begin a sentence, with an adverb clause. Um, 
I think you should put a uh, put comments after those introductory phrases and clauses. How about number five? To be successful. Uh, then go on uh, and finish it. So there you have a uh, infinitive to be successful, beginning with an infinitive phrase. And, and, it, and it continues on. So anyway, write some good, interesting sentences there on numbers one through five. Let's just take a quick look at the We Remember section. Flip over to page 37. Number six, seven, and eight, you're supposed to define predicate nominative, direct object, and indirect object. You want to know where to find those answers? Go back to lesson three. It's up there in the corner. And that was that lesson about noun complements. Pay close attention to the We Remember sections. Why? Because that's the stuff that ends up on your test. Okay? So you do that. The next part, identify each underlined phrase as a participle, gerund, or infinitive. And yes, there is one of each. Those are the three kinds of verbals. Um, remember how they work. Infinitives can be nouns, adjectives, and adverbs. They are two with a verb. Um, gerunds can be our verb ending in ing. And uh, I'm, I'm going backwards from the way it's written up there. A gerund, a uh, verb ending in ing, and it can be only a noun. Only a noun. And then participles can look like gerunds end in ing or end in ed or t, but it's a verb with an ending, and it's the past participle form of the verb or present participle if it's ends in ing. But it can only be used as adjectives. So they're going to come either before or after or somewhere in the sentence. That wasn't even helpful, was it? But it will always describe a noun. So make sure you find the noun you're describing when you choose that. Okay, so now the order I gave them is not the order that they are. So don't pay any attention to that. And you pick the right ones. Okay, in Numbers 12 through 14, you again have those, using those uh, indefinite pronouns and choosing the right verb. So I kind of went over that at the beginning because you have it on your quiz. Capitalization, and they even tell you how many. Okay, on the diagram, number 20. All right, not that complicated. Um, I'm just going to point out that two things to look for in the diagram. So in this diagram, you are going to have an adverb clause. All right, and you remember that an adverb clause, you go from the verb, you put the subordinating conjunction on here, and then you take it to um, the verb. Actually, you come from the word it modifies in the sentence, which is the verb here, and goes to the verb down here. Another interesting thing you're going to have in this diagram is a noun clause used as the object of preposition. So make sure you look for that. Okay. Using either or correctly on number 21, and you can go back to lesson 8 if you forgot how to do that. Number 22, a pronoun must agree with its antecedent in blank and blank. Make sure you know those answers because they're probably going to show up on your test. Go back to lesson 9 if you forgot how to do that. All right, numbers 23 and 24, I want all of you to look at that. I told you that... Uh, infinitives can be used three ways, and here they name those three ways. Infinitives can be nouns, adjectives, or adverbs. And they give you two examples, so you're going to pick two out of those three. One you don't use. But uh, look at that carefully. And I think you have some review parts. We didn't actually do that lesson in this book, but there are some reviews. Maybe it's in lesson one or two. You have some other review parts. So look at that carefully, and I think it's going to show up on your test, so pay attention to that. All right, I think that takes care of it for today. Make sure to write some good, interesting sentences. 
and I'm missing you all. Wish I could see you. So God bless you and what you're doing, where you are, and have a good day. Thanks.